Hey guys, I'm Chuck. We are Alley Chuck Adventures. If you're new here and this is your first time, we are RV enthusiasts and we love everything about the RV life. But this week we didn't love it so much as we're going to touch on some issues we had from tire blowouts to just things not working on the RV the way they should. So what just happened, Abe? I'm not happy right now. We just blew a tire. So close to home, too. Four hours away from home. After driving for, what, 10 hours, I'm exhausted. I have to go to work tomorrow the first day. So do I. So we're waiting on roadside assistance. I can't even break the lugs loose. Because if I could break the lugs loose, I've got the spare tire. I could probably drive it up on that block and get the that side of the camper up off the ground to put the tire on, but I can't break the lugs loose. So here we sit waiting. I just had a bad feeling this was gonna happen. Well, Chuck did say that the tire was starting to get a little bit bald on the edge. This is a warning to all you RVs, RVers out there. Don't be idiots like us. And if you see that your tire is getting a little bald, don't drive on it anymore. Like, yeah. change it out. I know you have to spend a little bit of extra money to change it out, but it's worth it. You don't have to sit in there and, you know, waste your time on the edge of a freeway waiting for roadside assistance to come and give you help. I will say the one bright spot, if we had to blow a tire, this was a good spot to do it because it was right where a truck way station was. So we're off the road. That is actually not the interstate this is an entrance ramp so we're not getting buzzed by semis and everything going 70 plus miles an hour that is the one bright spot but we have damaged wires the slide won't work i don't know where those wires went to i went inside there was rubber on top of the slide and it smelled so you tried to take this so you trying to open the slide and it won't work yeah you can hear the motor running but nothing's moving yeah oh so. it gets better and better yep I just got to figure out where those wires go and I had to splice them back together, but. The joys of RVing, this is not a joy. No. This, it's, this almost, is the to, this it's almost to the point where it makes me just want to hang up, the, hang it up, like, and not do it anymore. Well. It's, it's so stressful. That, it is stressful and we're very angry and upset right now and tired. <sighs> All I actually need is a good lug wrench to break these lugs loose. The, <laughs> that's a lesson to be learned. <clears throat> the lug wrench that comes with the rig is useless. I mean, it's bending with me trying to break the lugs loose. And I took the bottle jack out a few trips ago. I needed it at the house for something and I did not put it back. So there's that too. So all I got the tire, spare tire down. I'm ready to go. All I need is somebody to show up with a jack and a lug wrench that will break this loose and uh, we can get back on the road. I mean, there's rubber on top of the slide and it's on the floor. You can see a hole through the rubber seal. It's gonna to have to have some repair work done, that's for damn sure. Crappy ending to a trip. Crappy ending to a summer. That's all I'm gonna say. This is the side of RVing that is not fun. Oh my God, Ellie, you're a genius. So we're gonna use a shovel to dig for... You're a genius. The one we use for shark teeth is gonna come in handy now. to dig out just enough to be able to get the tire up on there and now he's putting lug nuts back yep insane i'll be glad to get this down off the ground off, off the air though just when those semis go by it's scary and it? it's whipping the rv yeah all right so there's the tire got the new 
back on. <laughs> oh my god. Holy crap. Okay, so there were a bunch of wires that when the tire blew, it ripped all these wires from the slide out. And now Chuck is having to tape the wires up. Um, the slide out won't even open now. So that's gonna have to be something else we're gonna have to get fixed. And this piece right here broke off. They're taped up for now. I don't know if they'll hold. God, I hope so. This is gonna be kind of scary. We hit, but we hit potholes and stuff. This can be a problem. So we're back on the road. We've been driving for about an hour, and I'd say 30 minutes since we've uh, switched the spare tire on, and we've just been going very slow, very cautious, not more than 59 mile an hour. And I gotta say that I'm gonna be quite relieved when we get home tonight. I think I can fix the damage that was done myself after we stopped and did a couple checks. I think it's not gonna be as bad as I first thought, hopefully. But I know one thing, this is a lesson learned. Uh, I did have the lug wrench with us and the breaker bar. I just, in my panic when it first happened, I had forgot that I had it in there. Uh, so it's uh, a lesson to just, when things like this happen, just calm down and try to keep your cool. It's hard for us, because me and Allie do tend to, when bad things happen, we tend to, I don't know what you call it, but we kind of panic. So keep your cool. I know one thing, we will not leave the house in this RV again without a good jack in that RV or in the truck. And I know, we had this happen in the White Hawk and the, we had to go buy a jack for that one so you think we would have learned our lesson well and that jack that we bought is sitting at the house right now because <laughs> i needed it i needed yeah. it recently to uh to do a, some work on my lawnmower and i just was lazy and didn't put it back and now you can see what happens when you are lazy and not put things back yep i procrastinated so always make sure you got the tools you need to change a tire and uh just try to keep your cool. So if you've been following the channel for a while, you know that uh, over the past couple camping trips, we've had a few issues. One being the refrigerator quit working. Uh, we've been having issues with the rear jacks and uh, it not working. I originally thought that these two things were connected. Turns out they are not. They were totally separate issues. Well, I guess since uh, RV1 is not going to return our phone calls for service requests, I'm going to go ahead and pull this fridge out myself and see if the fuse in behind is blown. Uh, I gotta say I'm not very happy that we put in two requests online for service. Not once have they called us. We got an email saying they would. Second time we didn't even get an email. Third time Allie calls and forced to leave a voicemail. So they never called back. So this doesn't uh, bode well for our uh, overall thoughts of the service after the sale at RV1. But I digress. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull this fridge out and see if I cannot figure it out on my own. All right, so I have the fridge all the way out. I tested here and I do have 13.57 volts, same as I have at the battery in the front of the RV. So it's got sufficient power coming in so my next guess is it's going to be the fuse that everybody's had issues with so i'm going to cut that zip tie pull that fuse out and uh, see if it's bad hopefully that's all it is and i can just replace that fuse and eventually probably do the mod on it to where i can run some wire and a regular blade fuse down through the opening here but for now I just want to get it operational. I can always pull this out again. It's not that hard. With this dolly, it makes it super simple too. So, and I want to do some repair work because this uh, wood is all boogered up behind me that I'm sitting on. And it wasn't me that did it. I don't know what happened. But it looks like water got to it somehow and uh, it swelled it up.
All right, so the new fuses came. Put the new fuse in and it's running. Everything is working right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and button it back up. I'm gonna leave the fridge out for a few hours just to make sure it doesn't blow again. I would have liked to have done the modification where I could have spliced into this and ran some wiring and a blade fuse up through here. But they say that voids a warranty, so I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to try that right now. If this works and lasts for a while until we can get it in and get that modification done, then uh, so be it. One thing you're going to have to know, owning an RV, you kind of got to be a little bit handy on things. <clears throat> so I'm going to button this back up. It just kicked off. The light is still on on the front so i don't know why the compressor kicked off it surely is not cold yet stay tuned well the fridge is installed back and all i gotta do is put the bottom plate back on eventually i gotta fix that wood down there but uh that wasn't what i did that was uh that was already starting to be damaged and i'm not sure how or why but wasn't too hard honestly the uh, four-wheel dolly and uh, the rug on top of it was just the perfect height just to slide that thing in and out so she's working she's cooling we got light just hope to god it doesn't blow another fuse right away until we can get that modification done but uh, yeah, if you're going to own an RV, you're going to have to know how to fix some of these things on your own unless you want to fight with uh, getting warranty work done. And everything is back. And dog here. She's working. So while we were in Nashville, friends of ours from a couple other YouTube channels, Wandering Wagners and Following the Fitches, decided that they would... Uh, helped me get this motor on the back jack uh, taken loose and tested. It had actually seized up. The motor was completely locked up. It looked like it had gotten water intrusion inside it and uh, that was an easy enough fix and a fairly cheap enough fix. I just ordered one off of Amazon and uh, got it in a couple days and put it on as soon as we got home. But should have been covered under warranty, but you know, waiting on warranty work and waiting for a callback even was, uh, not my idea of fun and, and being able to camp. So I just ordered one, it was like 70 bucks and replaced it myself and it works great. As I said before, you own an RV, you gotta know that you're gonna have to repair some stuff on your own unless you want it to be in the shop all the time. Yeah, no kidding, it pays to be handy for sure. Yeah. Of course I'd sit right underneath this gutter. <sighs> Kind of like a grand design, isn't it? Water's like dripping in my crotch. <laughs> Every time you go to work on something on a camper, those gutters are dripping on you. It never matter where you're at. Yeah, it doesn't matter what you're doing. Try it. Which one you got? You top one? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I see the gut. Can't see this one. Oh. Well, apparently the motor is seized up and bad, so it's going to be. I'm just going to replace it if I can get a new motor for a hundred bucks or something. Yeah, cheap labor. Yep. Yep. I'm, I'm getting a zero dollar an hour labor right now compared to what is it they want at Camping World? It was the sign said 159 an hour. 159 an hour. Jeez. Now, the good thing is this is 10 minutes worth of work so far, but they would have charged you that whole hour. Probably. Oh, of course. <laughs> and then some. Yep. Awesome. All right. We got friends with Milwaukee Tools. <laughs> okay, new motor is installed and it appears to be working. I can button it back up and close her up. Okay, everything's back in its place. Let's test her out. Well, I tell you, I'm getting a little unhappy with the way this RV is uh, holding up so far. Not only did we lose this cover on the way to Nashville, I'm up here and I'm looking as I'm emptying the tanks. 
light. Just hanging. Just all broke out hanging. I'm like, seriously? Wow.